So welcome to MLT online classes. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about dermatophytes. So dermatophytal infections we will study. Before that, let us do a quick revision. So in the last lecture, we discussed about superficial mycosis, particularly surface infections. So what are the three types of surface infections we have? They are Penia vesicola, Tinea nigra, and Phaedra. So let us see individually what is Tinea nigra. So tinea, tinea vesicular, it is an infection which is caused to the skin infection that will result in discoloration of the skin. So which is caused by the fungus, pitreosporum orbiculate. Then we have one more infection which is tinea nigra. So tinea nigra is a fungal infection to the keratinized tissue of uh, palms and soles. So it is caused by hot air vernis key. And we discussed one more disease, which is piatra, which is the infection to the hair. So in piatra, we have two types of fungus. One is fungal species, one is a piatra hortia and trichosporon belgi. So these are the two infections that will cause piatra. So this is the three types of surface infections we have in under superficial mycosis. Then coming to your second infections, which is cutaneous infections in superficial mycosis. So cutaneous infections include your dermatophytes. So these are the uh, fungal infections that will occur to the dermis layer of the skin. So let us see what are dermatophytes and what is their uh, pathogenesis. So your dermatophytes are a group of fungi that infects only superficial keratinized tissues such as your skin, hair and nails without uh, involving the living tissues. So in dermatophytes we have, um, so what exactly they will do is they will break down and utilize keratin. So they are incapable of penetrating subcutaneous tissue. They cause dermatophytosis which is an infection which is a, uh, usually it is called as a ringworm infection. So ringworm, why because we are calling it as a ringworm because you will see a ring like uh, uh, infections, a, warm, a ringworm like infection on the skin. So that is why they are called in ringworm infections. And sometimes they will cause hypersensitivity reactions too due to ringworm infection. That means allergic reactions can also occur due to dermatophytes. So let us see how these dermatophytes are classified. So these dermatophytes are classified into two types depending upon their genus and depending upon their habitat. So depending upon their genus, we have three types of genera of dermatophytes. They include trichophyton species, Microsporum species and epidermophyton species. So we have trichophyton dermophytes, microsporum dermophytes, and epidermophyton dermophytes. So your trichophyton dermophytes will cause infection to hair, skin, and nail, whereas your microsporum will infect hair and skin, whereas your epidermophyton will infect skin and nails. So depending upon genus, we have three types: trichophyton, microsporum species, and Epidermophyton species. Then, depending upon their habitat, so depending upon where they are living, their natural habitat, these are of three types. So, depending upon their natural habitat, there are three types. What are those? Anthrophilic, zoophilic, and geophilic. Anthrophilic means these are the fungal infections that will cause to humans, infect humans, and geophilic will cause infection to animals, and geophilic will cause infection in the soil. So they present in the soil, zoophilic present in animals, whereas you are anthrophilic present in man. So these are the three types of uh, fungal infections depend upon, depending upon their habitat. Whereas depending upon their genus, we have three types. Trichophyton species, microsporum species, and epidermophyton species. So first let us discuss about this trichophyton species. So your trichophyton, important species in trichophyton include T. rubrum, T. mantographites, T. sonsurius, T. sconialenli, T. vilosum, and T. vericosum. So there are totally six species under trichophyton genus. We have six types of clinically important fungal species which will cause infections in humans. Whereas in microsporum, we have three types microsporum gypsum, microsporum canis, and microsporum ordini. And in epidermophyton, we have only one species which is epidermophyton. Flocosum, E. Flocosum. So, first let us see about trichophyton species and their infections. So, these trichophyton infections will occur in the 
uh, different regions of our body they can occur in the they can infect in the palms if they if we got a trichophyton infection in the palms means that is called as your tinea corporis so tinea corporis will occur in the non non hairy part of the skin whereas your tinea pedis will occur to the foot so tinea pedis will occur infection to the foot and tinea corpora so tinea corpora will cause infection in the groin region of the humans okay so these are the three types of uh, uh, trichophyton species among these the important species in trichophyton are trichophyton rubrum and trichophyton mantagraphites so let us see what is t rubrum and t mantagraphites in detail so the best way of uh, okay other one other important thing is what are the clinical infections that are caused by these dermato dermatophytes so these dermatophytes will cause these five diseases they will cause tinea capitis favus tinea corporis ectotrix and endotrix by seeing or reading the names you might not get the significance of the disease let me show you the images of each clinical condition say for example let me show you how this tinea capitis looks like so tinea capitis is a fungal infection which is occur to the hair to the on the head so this is your tinea capitis so this is the the patch this patchy area is the fungal infection which is tinea capitis that is occurred to the head the, to the hair so this tinea capitis is occurred by microsporum species and trichophyton species will cause this tinea capitis then coming to your favus so this is how your favus infection looks like so it is much severe than tinea capitis so this is the favus fungal infection that will cause uh, that is caused by tinea sconianelli tinea villosum and m gypsum so these three fungus will cause favus so this is how your favus looks like then you have tinea corporis so tinea corporis looks like this it will grow on the non hairy part of the skin and it will cause this kind of infection and you have your ectotrix and endotrix so ectotrix and endotrix are the hair infections if the fungus grow outside the hair stem so this is the hair and if if, if the fungus growing on the periphery to the hair stem means it is called ectotrix so ectotrix is caused by microsporum species and tirobrum t mantagraphites will cause ectotrix whereas endotrix means they won't protrude outside from the hair so endotrix will be on the surface of the hair so endotrix is caused by t sconiolenli t sans tonsorans and t villosum will cause endotrix so these are the five types of clinical infections that are occurred by dermatophytes what are those favus which is a uh, first one is tinea capitis which is uh, a patchy a, a fungal infection on the hair then favus which is uh, seen by uh, presence of uh, bright green colored bryophingens uh, uh, fungus growth on the hair and tinea corporis which is a fungal infection on the non hairy part of the skin and ecto ectotrix is a fungal infection on the hair on the periphery of the hair shaft whereas endotrix is on the surface of the hair shaft so these are the five clinical infections in dermatophytes so let us see the pro, the the laboratory diagnosis and characteristic features of each fungal species so starting your laboratory diagnosis so in laboratory diagnosis the first one is specimen so what kind of specimen we should take we should take either skin hair or nails we should take the specimen then we should go for direct microscopy how we will perform direct microscopy we will perform direct microscopy by keeping it as a in 10% koh mount by preparing 10% koh mount we can see fungal morphology then we can go for culture also so in culture we have sd culture so we can go for culture at uh, the 25 to 30 degrees centigrade for 3 weeks then we will get the colony the growth of fungus so the, the the fungal growth can be identified by depending upon the colony morphology and pigment production and the presence of microconidia or macroconidia we can able to characterize the type of micro the fungus that is growing in the sta medium then we will go for microscopic examination microscopic examination is done by lpcb lactophenol cotton blue and we will go for observing them so under microscope you will see your first trichophyton species 
So among trichophyton species, you have two important species, which is your trichophyton rubrum and trichophyton mentagrophytes. So trichophyton rubrum is a, the how we will identify trico, trichophyton rubrum means trichophyton rubrum has tear shaped conidia. So they have tear shaped microconidia along with hyphae and red pigment can be seen on the river side of the medium and they are usually urease negative and they will cause club shaped or thin walled microconidia. So these are the characteristic features of trichophyton rubrum. So trichophyton rubrum have tear shaped micro, microconidia along with hyphae. They will produce red color on the river side of the medium and they are urease negative. Whereas your trichophyton mentagrophytes are, they will form clusters of microconidia like a grapes and there is no red colors on red color formation on the river side of the medium and they are usually urease positive. So these are the difference between trichophyton rubrum and trichophyton mentagrophytes. So these both trichophyton rubrum and trichophyton mentagrophytes will cause your ectotrics. Ectotrics means formation of fungal infection on the periphery of the hair shaft. So they will cause ectotrics. Then you have some more species like a tinea vilosum, tinea sconiae and tinea vericosum. So tinea vilosum will cause a violet color for color formation on the back side of the medium. Whereas tinea sconiae can be identified by presence of uh, ecto endotrix. So endotrix will be a characteristic feature for tinea sconiae and also you will see antler hyphae in tinea, tinea sconiae Whereas in tinea vericosum, you will see chlamydiospores. So presence of chlamydiospores indicates it is a tinea vericosum infection. So I hope you already know what are chlamydiospores. They are the vegetative spores, right? So this is all about your trichophyton species. Then let us go for mentagrophytes. Then you have mentagrophytes. So in mentagrophytes, we have first one is M. canis and M. gypsum. So M. canis have this club shaped spindle like a, a macroconidia and they will form fluorescein yellow green color fungal infection on the head. You already saw favus. Favus is occurred due to mentagrophytes. So M. canis and M. gypsum. So this uh, M. canis is in the natural habitat of M. canis is dogs and cats. That is why we said it as a canis. Canis means all cats will come in this genera. So M. canis will normally occur in the cats and dogs and they will cause hair fluorescent yellow color and their spindle shaped rough walled multi-segment curve and waxy projection macroconidia is present. So spindle shaped multi septed uh, curved and macroconidia present in the M. canis. And the microconidia are very few in M. canis. Whereas in M. gypsum, it is na its natural habitat is a geophilic, that means it is present in soil. And hair is not fluorescent in M. gypsum. But in M. canis, the hair will be in fluorescent green color. And uh, in M. gypsum, it is the macroconidia is in spindle shape. Whereas in uh, M. M. canis, it is how curved and multi-septed. And there is no curve end in the uh, there is no curve end in M. gypsum. So these are the four characteristic features to identify M. gypsum. So M. gypsum present in soil, hair is not fluorescent, it is spindle shaped and it doesn't have curve end at the tip. So this is all about your M. gypsum. Then coming to your last and final uh, dermatophyte which is epidermophyton species. Under epidermophyton genus we have one particular species called epidermophyton floclosum. So epidermophyton floclosum has multi-branched macroconidia. So it has macroconidia are numerous and they are smooth, thick, thin walled, club shaped with multi septate and rounded tips. So they have rounded tips and uh, they are thin walled. They have, they have smooth appearance and they have no microconidia in epidermophyton floclosum. So usually you will see chlamydia spores in epidermophyton floclosum species also. So these are the characteristic features for epidermophyton floclosum. Then what are the treatments for dermatophytes? So topical antifungal agents are generally used for treatment. So t infections may be resistant. Oral griseofulvin is the drug of choice. So oral griseofulvin is the drug which is the best antifungal drug that we can take for uh, having fungal infections, particularly our skin dermatophytal infections. 
so this is all about your epidermophyton and uh, dermatophytes so a quick review of today's lecture so in dermatophytes we have the all dermatophytal infections are called ringworm infections due to presence of ringworm like uh, uh, infection on the skin and these are classically divided into two types depending upon their genus we have trichophyton species microsporum species and epidermophyton species and depending upon their habitat we have three types anthrophilic geophilic and zoophilic anthrophilic means fungus present in man and zoophilic means these are present in animals and in geophilic means they are present in soil so coming to your trichophyton species in trichophyton we have t rubrum t mantagrophytes t sconiellae t villosum and t verrucosum in microsporum species we have uh, m gypsum m canis and m ordini and in epidermophyton we have e floclosum so coming to your uh, clinical infections caused by dermatophytes we have tinea captatis favus tinea this is tinea captatis then favus tinea corporis ectotrix and endotrix then we discussed about laboratory diagnosis in laboratory diagnosis the best uh, uh, specimen of choice is skin hair or nail and we will go for direct microscopy by koh preparation then we will go for culture in sdm medium at 25 to 30 degrees centigrade for 2 to 3 weeks then we will get the colony and that colony will be identified depending upon the colony morphology pigment production on the reverse side of the medium so depending upon that let us go to trichophyton species in trichophyton species we have two important species which is trichophyton rubrum and trichophyton mantagrophytes so trichophyton rubrum can be identified by um, having red color pigmentation on the reverse side of medium and it is usually ureus negative whereas your trichophyton mantagrophytes are ureus positive and no red, red color pigmentation formation in the back side of the medium then we have three more species in trichophyton species which are t villosum t sconiellae t verrucosum which has a characteristic features to identify then we have microsporum canis and microsporum gypsum microsporum canis can be identified by having a curved end at the tip of the macroconeria whereas your m gypsum doesn't have this curved at the end at tip of macroconeria then last and finally is your epiderma floclosum epiderma floclosum is occurred due to Uh, it is occurred by a fungus called epiderma floclosum floclosum and it has multi macroconeria with round heads with multi septate so these are the identifying characteristics of your dermatophytes and the best drug of choice for dermatophytal infections is griseofelvin so griseofelvin is the best drug of choice for your dermatophytal infections so thank you students